And hello, one and all. Welcome back to Manly Voices. It's Evan, also known as Manly Ankles. Today, I'm with someone new. It's my good buddy, Brennan. Hello there. This is Brennan. (laughs) This is Brennan, and this is Manly Voices, of which he is now joining me on. It's quite exciting. I've never had one of my Phoenix friends on the show before, but here he is. I'm now part of this continuum. This Yes, this continuity is now immortalized in entire being. Uh, how you doing today, buddy? Uh, I don't know. I'm interested to see what we've got going on. I see four yes. guys in a row here that... Um, oh, yes. He looks quite <laughs> This strange. is like This is like a, the worst Connect Four game ever going on. Oh, yeah. Here. But this is a classic here on the show. We love Monster Prom. And uh, do you know much about this game? Nothing. Never mm-hmm. even heard of it. Literally that. nothing? Okay. Um, it's an indie game. It's a multiplayer dating sim in which uh, you go through wacky scenarios with uh, certain stats that affect the outcome. And your ultimate goal is to woo one of the eight most popular and charismatic characters in the game. Uh, yeah. I can be sometimes skillful at that. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got a two-player game. We're going to go second term. Gives us more options. Do a short game. And yeah, so we'll go through the whole experience for you guys. Sorry if you've heard the narration before of the, the introduction and whatever, but we're going to give the full treatment to, to good old Brennan here. So, ah, spooky high school. The sweetest years of our lives. Back then, we were young and unafraid. Sometimes reckless, sometimes brilliant, sometimes just stupid, but always willing to live life to the fullest. We were on a wild journey to discover who we really were. And so, we can choose one of these four characters to play as. Uh, I, myself, will play as Green Zombie Man. And I'll name him something like uh, Captain Sheer. Captain (laughs) Sheer. Sure. (laughs) I was going to go something along the lines of Captain Sheer Pants or something like that. Captain Sheer with the pronoun of he. Yep. (laughs) That's going to work out real well on this this boat of love. Am I trying to date you? No, you're trying to date one of the characters that will be introduced in a moment. But for now, we have you to choose a character. Okay. Um... I will. I guess I will choose the one on the left. The one on the left. He has a little friendly. Oh, he was the Connect Four guy from earlier. Yeah. What 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 name would you like to be? Um, I will be Gerald. Gerald. Yeah. You I, sure, that's I'm that's choosing, a way to spell it. I'm choosing to spell it like that. <laughs> and would you like keep male pronouns? Uh, yeah, sure. I'd I'd accept that. Sure All right. And we had yet to experience its ultimate challenge: the monster prom. I remember it clearly. Two weeks were left, and as we fantasized about our dream prom dates, and we were all scrambling to catch the attention of one of our eight most charismatic classmates. Scott Howell, 21, a werewolf athlete who compensated for his rather small brain with a stupidly huge heart. Miranda Vanderbilt, 19, a sweet mermaid princess who was as cute as she was genocidal. Like already. Polly Geist, possibly 22, a party ghost with an insatiable hunger for all the wrong things. Damien LaVey, 21, a fearless demon with a taste for destruction and a love of fire. Liam DeLioncourt, 4XX, a hipster vampire whose standoffish demeanor hit the fact that he was truly a lovable dork. Okay. And Zoe, for... ever? An eldritch cutie who went from endless deity of the dark realms to ultimate fangirl. That's her dang and rampa superlative. And then Calculester Hewlett Packard, version 1.0, a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Are robots monsters? I guess in this case he might be. Okay. <laughs> and Vera Oberlin, 23, a mean self made Gorgon with a, a merciless sense of business. It was clear it had to be one of them. But who? We only had two weeks to choose our prom date, and even more daunting, we only had two weeks to woo them and conquer their hearts. But as I already said, we were young and unafraid, and we were ready to start. And so how this starts off is the stupidest pop quiz ever. All minds are rotten, but they're rotten in so many different ways. Worry no more. We're now using our PhD in bullshit to diagnose which kind of deviant sicko you are. Monster Prom's stupidest pop quiz ever, trademark, will throw a bunch of absurd questions at you and turn your answers into your character stats. Alright, 
questions. So now we have to answer these questions to the best of our ability. Oh, wow. So if you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would it be? We got a swan. They're classy. Plus, it reminds me of that myth that Leda and the swan. So at least by bestiality standards, it has a certain chic appeal. A human being, because I'm the kind of douchebag who loves to find loopholes and stupid <laughs> questions like this one. A great white shark, if I have to fuck an animal, let's at least make it a story worth telling. Uh, I'm going to have a swan, because I feel classy like that. Okay. And w w I'll take the great white shark. Great white shark. You're a, you're a dangerous on the edge kind of guy. Yeah. You, so you're yeah. charming and uncreative. And ah, charming. I seem to recall <laughs> that from earlier. <laughs> yeah, right. We played uh, Death Road to Canada, and he made his character that, that trait... And then he died two days later. <laughs> uh, which inanimate object do you think would make the best girlfriend or boyfriend, provided you went criminally insane? An ATM, sugar baby alive, here I come. A human-sized pillow depicting a character created by myself. As a matter of fact, I have all the needed paperwork, and I'm only waiting for the conservative, narrow-minded laws of our country to finally step forward into waifu and husbando territory, as was clearly intended by God. Or a dildo. <laughs> Duh. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, the dildo, because... Okay. Can yeah. I choose the same option as you? Yes, you can. Would um, you also like a dildo? <laughs> uh, no, I, I was just interested if that was an option. I'll, yes. take, I'll take an ATM. All right. Now you got wealthy. Oh, yeah. And I'm fun. You find your zodiac sign to be inaccurate. Design your own personal zodiac sign. <laughs> these, will these will cater us to certain characters. Um, but we, you can answer however you would like. We got the happy-go-lucky ecstasy pill, the ambiguous iguana, the randomly arranged set of stars, the now canon lovers, the cute pup, or the regal 1%. I'm going to go with the happy-go-lucky ecstasy pill. Um, I like the now canon lovers. The now canon lovers. Yeah. So that caters you to Zoe, and I cater to Polly. And then what would be a killer accessory? A fabulous purse made the, from the skin of your worst enemy? Coolness itself? Logitech G56, G560, the best RGB gaming speakers, words, English, good. Shiny armor, fancy brass knuckles, a necklace with your own name in case you forget. <laughs> okay, I think I like that one. <laughs> Even though you won't use it, you won't use your own name. Yeah, maybe. Well, I'll take like the fabulous purse. Fabulous purse. So that caters you to Vera, and that caters me to Scott. So we have multiple different avenues we can explore, depending on how we do with them in okay. the further situations. Yeah. So yeah, no, nothing's um, nothing crazy. Sure. All right. So I start off. We got six locations we can visit uh, to up one of our our stats. We got smarts, boldness, creativity, charm, fun, and money. How are you smarter than me? Uh, because duh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, each one of these can be increased by going to one of these locations. We got auditorium for creativity, smarts for class, uh, library gives you money, outdoors gives you fun, gym gives you charm, and bathrooms gives you boldness. Mm. Um, I think if I was going to woo Polly, I would want to get a lot of fun. Oh, do I have to woo the people that I got chosen I, for? Whatever you've catered to the most, I feel. Whatever did, did any of them seem to yeah, stand I liked, out? Yeah, I like the genocidal pink one. You liked the Miranda? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think she would benefit most from charm and money, personally. Mm, good uh, thing I got money. Yeah. <laughs> you got, Stacked. You got seven money. Wow. Seven money. That's actually not a bad starting point. For me, if I'm going after Polly, I'm going to get lots of fun, so I'm going to start with outdoors. That day during recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. You have no idea how it escalates so much, but at one point there are like 300 people. Someone summons demons from a nightmare dimension. The consequences might distort the fabric of reality itself, but who cares? It's a rad party. You gain plus two fun. That's for going outside? Yep. Who has a okay. You get plus two of each stat every time you go somewhere. You're just getting ready to leave when you get a text from Polly. Hey, baby, let's party. <laughs> How can you refuse such a formal missive? You track her down immediately. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Do you want to try Polly? <laughs> uh, sure. Okay. Hey, you got my text. That's good, because I need some help brainstorming. I'm going to go to a party tonight, but I'm pretty sure it's just going to be lame, and that needs to change. See, it's a costume party, you know, where everyone dresses up as their favorite humans. <laughs> I'm going to go as a sexy tax attorney, but I'm not sure even the sexiest tax attorney can rescue this party from the depths of lamitude. 
So, got any ideas to help things spice... Oh, spice things up. <laughs> spice yeah. things up. <laughs> oh, you've got some ideas, and they're the spiciest. Spike the punch with mandrake root. It turns monsters into actual humans. Okay, <laughs> you go as a sexy tax yeah. attorney. I'll go as a sexy tax evader. All right, so the answers could either pass or fail, depending on the level of whatever stat it, it uh, represents. And I think this might turn into fun. This might go creative. I have no idea. So I'm going to go pick a sexy tax evader. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so creative, yeah. <laughs> Later that night. Halt! Tax evader! Polly cracks her standard-issued tax attorney whip, knocking over a stack of solo cups and upturning the punch bowl. You stand accused of violating Article 69 of the Tax Penal Code. The fine is 1,000 human dollars, payable in spankings. Oh, you're more than happy to do the time <laughs> for your delinquency. The rest of the partygoers get into the spirit, and soon they're all confessing to unpaid taxes. Uh -huh. Paying for your crimes never felt so good. You gain plus two fun and plus one charm. <laughs> and, so if stat and if so if these go badly, you pick the wrong answer, you lose these stats. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, all, right. all right, Gerald, <laughs> it's your turn. <laughs> oh, I can't go outdoors because you went yeah, outdoors? Yeah, I, I took that spot for Oh, me. that's so unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. um, how did you get the charm? Uh, I believe the gym is how you get charm. Um, okay, I'm going to go for... How does that make sense? I'm going to go for the gym, though. You'll find out. That day, an epic dodgeball match takes place. Everything seems lost, but you deliver an inspirational speech that fuels your team's spirit, leading to a spectacular comeback. You're clearly a natural-born leader. You gain plus two charm. Oh, yeah. Later, you see Vera cackling to herself in the hallway, which is whatever, but you might as well find out why. <laughs> Just practicing my prom queen acceptance speech in my mind. It's not like the title bears any meaning whatsoever, of course, and I really do consider the whole thing way beneath me. However, considering how much meaning other girls put on it, I can't risk some uppity bitch thinking she's better than I am. Plus, it's not bad branding either. I could see using a victory to start a line of successful prom queen accessories, guaranteed to get you the win. Perfect prom shoes, the right makeup, fancy knives, take out your opponents. Uh -huh. Speaking of which, I assume this goes without saying, but I'm not leaving anything to chance. I'll be doing a blood ritual to ensure my win. I still haven't found the exact details yet, but I'm optimistic that at least some of the items will be found in the shop. The only question is, where exactly can I find the details for a proper blood ritual? Why don't we ask the coven? Uh -huh. They're witches, they should know all about blood magic. Literally, just search the internet. <laughs> it's like literally what it's there for. Uh, I feel like that's uh, pretty bold on the bottom. So I'm going to go with uh, let's ask the coven. Eh? I think this one might actually be smarts. Really? Yeah. Like pointing out the obvious answer kind of thing. Uh, you do have a lot of smarts, not so much boldness. But oh, am I supposed to like average them or is, like, uh, become specialized? I think you're specializing to whomever you're trying to date. Okay. So maybe if you don't want to date Vera, you can uh, choose the wrong answer and. Okay. Walk. Yeah. I don't know. Um. Then I'll I'll be sassy with her. Sure. Be sassy let's with let's her. Search, search the internet. internet. All right. Ah. All right. <laughs> oh, all right. Good call. Sometimes you get so caught up in the grand scheme of exploiting blood magic to secure petty victory that you forget about the little things. You and Vera scamper over to the library to put school's computers to good use for once. For real, does anyone at the school use school resources for educational purposes? Mm, let's just search blood magic to guarantee prom queen victory over basic bitches to maintain social status. That's pretty clear, right? Couldn't possibly be clearer. Seems like we're going to need the blood of a former prom queen, tongue of a goat, and the earrings of an ancient goddess. Not exactly stuff that's going to be lying around, but when you're destined to be prom queen, you make it work. Not that I'm destined to be prom queen, or I wouldn't have to do blood magic in the first place. But hey, when you want to achieve greatness, you make your own destiny. You check the shop, I'll grab a goat, and we'll meet up in the bathrooms to cut its tongue out and get this party started. Sounds like a party indeed. You gain plus two fun and uh -huh. plus one smarts. Okay. Great. Scenario. And now we trade places. Uh, choose a TV show. Oh, okay. Uh, fucking Friends. I've been watching a lot of that lately. Oh, well, I, oh, it's not an option. Uh, yeah, okay. just say one out loud. Uh, 
<laughs> the Office. Boom. The Office. There we go. <laughs> Player orders decided based on how mind blowing it would be if next year the showrunners revealed that the TV show happened in the same narrative universe than Naruto. <laughs> okay. Uh, it would be pretty mind blowing if The Office occurred in Naruto. Personally, um, I haven't seen Friends, so I wouldn't. I I couldn't make a good comparison. I. It's hard to say because they're both so. I don't want to say mild mannered, but there's there's not a lot of action going on in those shows besides the interpersonal dramas. Uh, I honestly have no idea. There's uh, so let's randomize it. <laughs> uh, the die is cast. The die is cast. So I'm going first then. I can't tell. Are we against each other? Like, like there are. It seems like we're just on our own paths. We're kind of on our own paths, and cho choosing to go after whomever we want. Uh, so can we, we swoon the same person? We could, and then we'd truly be against each other. Ah. <laughs> yes. Um, Rivals. But for my purposes, I'm interested in going after Polly, so I'm going to sit at her table. And if you wanted to sit at uh, this person's table, that's the shop. So if you—that's the shop. Okay. Yeah, Which what money? Oh, you, my you money. Have, yeah, you have, have seven money. money. All the monies. <laughs> yeah, all the money. So I'm gonna sit with uh, Polly here. Scott and Polly are sitting together, laughing their metaphorical asses off. <laughs> do, do Damien! Do Damien! Girl, I'm Damien. Look at my stupid red face. I use violence to cover up the fact that I've been brought up to use the to. Rev Veer a toxic version of masculinity which is alienated my, from my own true emotions. <laughs> you sound exactly like him. Okay, okay, you do Vera. I'm Vera. I'm very smart and my hair is pretty and all my friends look up to me because I'm a strong, independent woman. Scott, I'm not so sure you understand how impressions work. I'm not Scott. I'm Vera. <laughs> you can tell because I said my name just now. Okay, what about you, Captain She? Got any good impressions? Just one, but it's a real doozy. Uh, <laughs> so, whoop, whoop, it's me, Scott. I'm a dog boy who's bad at impressions. Look at me, I'm Polly. Look at me, go. Uh, so one of these will uh, essentially piss off the other. Uh, so I'm going to do this one so I can cater to Polly. I know you're doing an impression of me because you said my name, but... Oh my god, that sounds exactly like him! It does? Yeah, remember that time you took impressions? We, we took that impressions class together? We had to introduce ourselves? Oh yeah, I guess <laughs> I did say, Woof woof, it's me, Scott, a dog boy who's bad at impressions. But I didn't yell like that. I'm sorry, are you the real Scott? There's two absolutely identical werewolves in front of me, and I can't tell the difference. Polly insists on a smooching contest to determine who the real Scott is. You end up winning in more ways than one. All right. Oh, <laughs> he's getting steamy. Oh, I can't. I can't sit four. at your table. Table. Nope. Yep. Okay. Well. All right. I guess I'll sit over there since I ch chose her and she. I guess was our chosen for me. Right. Um. You might be able to get a chance to switch over to Miranda, um, if you choose the right option for her. Oh, okay. <laughs> Vera's about to lift a glass of scotch to her immaculately painted lips. You can drink whatever at this school, apparently. <laughs> when Miranda screams... Uh, Stop! Don't drink that! What? Why not? This scotch costs more than most cars. Has your taste dried it out yet? Has or dry it? <laughs> <laughs> that might, that's a really dry scotch. That's super neat. Has your taster dried it yet? What taster? You don't have a taster? What if your drink is poisoned by someone jealous of your good looks and royal title? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this, seriously. It's all good. There's nothing serious about this. It's just a show. Listen, me. <coughs> Listen, Mary. I only drink four things. Scotch, red wine, the tears of my enemies, and straight-up poison. Hmm. You drink poison on purpose? Miranda, my hair is venomous snakes. You think poison actually harms me? You should still have a taster. What if someone puts really spicy hot sauce in your drink or, or poison? Ugh. What do I have to do to get you to drop this? Simple. Hire a taster. Fine. Any volunteers? This might just be the big break you've been looking for. You raise your hand when Vera picks you. Uh, you drink all her scotch, enraging <laughs> Vera and delighting Miranda. Pretend to be poisoned, terrifying Miranda, and amusing Vera. Uh. So if you wanted to delight Miranda, here's your chance. 
This isn't gonna be like an Uno reverse and <laughs> it should, I think it should be as uh simple, straightforward. straightforward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh then yeah, I'll I'll try to delight Miranda. Very well. What are you doing? That bottle oh. costs as much as the first Apollo mission. That makes sense. How do you feel, Royal Tester? T- taster. Just royal Tester. <laughs> Take you... all my tests for me. Yeah. <laughs> are you poisoned? Well, you're not poisoned, but you're pretty fucking wasted. You give all the Mirandas you can see two big thumbs How up. How many do I see? <laughs> A job well done. No fear is sure to be not to be poisoned. <laughs> well, yeah, because there's no scotch left to be poisoned by. Don't listen to her. You did well. Come with me. I have some other beverages you must simply verify for safety. You spend the rest of the night getting wasted on expensive liquors at Miranda's place. Courtship never tasted so good. Ah, uh, yes. I know all go. the liquors. <laughs> all right. Trade places. Everybody choose something bad. Uh, alcohol poisoning. Because uh-huh. we're, on the, we're yeah. on the subject. Um, genocide. Genocide. That's <laughs> it's pretty bad. Play orders decided based on how horrible it would be if the selected thing was a part of a torture well, device or a legal punishment. Okay. Well, I guess you'd win. <laughs> Wait, why? Because it, it would be a horrible form of punishment. Yeah. I guess oh, al- you said alcohol poisoning. I thought you yeah. just said alcohol. Yeah. Um, genocide. It's definitely genocide <laughs> is the worst. The worst torture. It's like especially if it's the genocide of like your entire family lineage or something. Oh, like I thought that. I was asking, like it was a horrible way to torture someone. Like it, it, it was. It, it was is. awful. It was awful <laughs> at torturing them. Oh, okay. So I just interpreted the question. No, different. on the contrary, it's it's so good at torture they made it a, a device or a legal punishment. Okay, so very I think, well. I think you win for sure. <laughs> and then uh, I need to find a better voice for her, or else my voice will keep cracking. Oh, that's all good. Do yeah. they speak? Uh, what? Do they speak like slightly? Yeah, they'll be like small fluff phrases. Be like, okay, okay let's go. <laughs> yeah, okay, stuff like that. Um. All right, since you're going first, you can uh, go anywhere. Anywhere. Um, the oh. auditorium will not grant you creativity this time because it is now taken by the it shop. It is a shop. Okay, I'm going to go make more money. Is okay. that the library you said? Yes, is the library. Okay, I'm going to go read and make money on that for some reason. That, ta- that day you spend some time on the library's PCs mining some bitcoins. <laughs> that makes sense. This is supposed to have something to do with solving the algorithms and the rise of cryptocurrency, but you guess that nobody actually has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to two million dollars. Oh yeah, which is Wait. unfortunately equal to two monster dollars. Okay. So plus two money. You're making your daily protection payment to Vera when suddenly. Greetings. Uh, <laughs> what is this? Everyone, stop what you're doing and look at my majestic visage. Hmm. The interdimensional prince, muscling in on my territory, are you? Not at all, my darling viperus. I'm here strictly in a business capacity. You can take this guy over if you want, just, just to make it like fair. Yeah. I just, I just got, I get so excited whenever this guy. Uh, I, I, I'm so confused. <laughs> He's the interdimensional prince. He's trying to marry anyone who is anyone. somewhat legal. Okay, As some, even somewhat, like only partially. Okay. Mm-hmm. Not at all, my darling Vipress. I am here strictly in a business capacity. Business, you say? I'm all ears. Except for my snakes, which are all tongues and teeth. Uh-huh. It's simple economics, my love. You're an aspiring crime kingpin. I'm a prince. I propose a merger. A merger of our resources, our minds, our bodies, our and our spirits. Not bad. Interesting. Oh no, Vera's getting out of her Vera's <laughs> getting out her calculator. If she decides this merger is financially viable, good luck asking her to prom. But how will you undermine Vera's confidence in the prince's financial status? Replace all his gold with fish, <laughs> okay. or steal all his money with your high-frequency trading algorithm, Carl. Um, I like I like stealing his money. Okay. Uh, so before smart. we drop the contract, I hope you won't mind providing a full accounting of your assets. Of course not, my dear. As you can see from the spreadsheet, my entire kingdom is Ugh. owned by someone named Carl. Let me see that. <laughs> you idiot! Carl isn't a person. It's a computer algorithm. It probably stands for something like computerized autonomous robotic light bulb. Yeah. Nope. Doesn't stand for anything. It's just Carl. You gain plus two boldness okay. among smarts. <laughs> there you go. Um, sure. Captain She is going to go to the gym. I feel like charm would be a useful thing to have. Epic dodgeball match. At one point, you're about to be eliminated by a player from the other team. 
But suddenly you convince him not to throw the ball at you with a heartfelt speech about the importance of everyone's lives. The player bursts into tears, and you take advantage of that moment of weakness, throwing a ball at him. You lose minus five mercy, Ooh. a stat that might be useful in Monster Prom's sequel, but is it now? And you gain plus two charm. Uh, is it is it useful in the second one? Not to my knowledge. It's okay. Massive, but it might be in one of their future titles. Who knows? On your way out, you spot Polly, still wearing the lab coat she stole from that human party the other night. She takes it off and throws it at you to get your attention. Hi! Yo, yo, yo! That human party convinced me I want to be a scientist, but not just any kind, a party scientist! What's a party scientist, you ask? Why, just a scientist who's dedicated to discovering the secret to the raddest party! Oh, she's still reading that. Through a series of extremely <laughs> scientific experiments, I aim to discover what exactly makes a party good. So I can distill whatever it is into a vial and drink it! Or, you know, just have really dope parties all the time. Anyway, I'm going to bar mitzvah tonight, and I need your scientific advice. What can we do to push this party over the edge? The electric slide, but with actual electricity. <laughs> Chemistry! Hmm. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what either of these could represent. This could smarts. be creativity, and this could be smarts. Or boldness. Or boldness. I don't have a lot of boldness. You're not getting money. Uh, I'm not getting money, no. Uh, let's do electric Unless slide. Unless you've saved power. Hey, later that night. <laughs> Look at them dance! I don't know why I never thought of this before. It's just basic science. Lightning gives life to a Frankenstein. A Frankenstein is a stitched together mass of sexy flailing limbs. Which is also what a party is. Lightning is the life of the party. What's that? You want to know what the bar mitzvah boy is? I don't know. I don't know any of these kids. Crashing bar mitzvahs, the height of party culture. You have so much fun, you forget to tell Polly she should have said Frankenstein's monster. Ooh. You gain plus two fun and one charm. Alright, and weekend. that weekend something happened to... You! But we'll figure out what that is next time on Manly Voices. All right. So, yeah, that's the first episode with Brennan. I hope he's been a delight to you all, as he's been a delight to me. I hope so, too. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. If you like this, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you want to see more. Comment on what other voice adventures you'd like to see us do next. And until next time, bye!